Hey, how's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. I'd like to continue these series of videos in our Missing Link News show in which we react to the headlines of the day, but with that crucial element restored, which might allow you to really understand what is going on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you probably already know about the crazy thing going on in the world now, which I'm going to talk about in this video. Squatters are taking over America in the precise sense of taking people's houses away from them, not by breaking the rules, but rather by abusing the rules that are already on the books and have been since, in fact, the 18th century. It's just that now with things like TikTok, you can have real like these uh, so-called migrants from Venezuela, these influencers, um, detail um, in Spanish um, on post telling people how exactly they can do this, and then I'm having those posts shared like hundreds of thousands of times over social media. So now the word is easier to get out how to do this, but um, there's actually abusing laws from centuries ago, which we're going to talk about in this video, but we're also going to uh, find out why this is not an aberration away from the rationalization of society, which people like Habermas claim to be the foundation of, what's that word we're told we have to constantly think about this election year 2024, democracy. No, this is the logical outcome of exactly that. Now, we'll have to wait till later on in the video to detail that connection to Habermas, but first let's talk about how this happens on the ground level. Squatting has become a major issue in the United States because of the way that technology has made it easier than ever before to do this and get away with it. The way that this usually works um, is that uh, people will um, use their smartphone to look um, for local listings on a site like um, Zillow, and um, they see um, houses um, listed for sale for absurd prices like, I don't know, what $800,000 is what you'll need in many metro areas now for a basic house. They see a house listed for sale um, with uh, photographs, which they can very easily you know, swipe through the photos and see that um, if it seems that the, there's uh, no furniture in the house, the house is just completely empty, um, it, it seems like a good candidate for them to come because it seems that um, this house is up for sale because the owner is somewhere else. They're not currently living in it and trying to sell it. So they'll put this to the test by simply driving to the location as provided on the um, information publicly on the website, and um, they'll uh, perform a little test or they'll put, say, an orange traffic cone in the driveway of that house and come back a week later to see if it's still there. If it is, there's a good chance the owner is um, not going to notice if they'll come back then after that in the middle of the night to change the locks out um, and then uh, produce a bogus lease paper such that if the owner does come back some months later to find that there's people he doesn't even freaking know living in the house he thought he was going to sell for $900,000 at current inflated prices, um, if he finds this objectionable, even to the point of, like, calling the police, if they don't murder him first. I'm not making a joke about this, but there were cases where a woman uh, was living abroad in Spain and came to check on her uh, dead mother's apartment, which she had inherited in New York, um, only to find... Um, that there were uh, two men who had been living there for the months that uh, she had been um, away in another country not checking on it. And um, when she proceeded to ask them what they were doing in her property, uh, they uh, murdered her and stuffed her body in a duffel bag. So there's a very real risk, unfortunately, um, that uh, you may not even survive to the point of being able to call the police. But if you do, you'll find that um, there's effectively nothing that they can do because of the legal technicality that if they show up and find that um, there is um, a lease paper produced by the criminals and that uh, the uh, keys um, the owner has do not match the locks that are currently there. Um, it is no longer a criminal case. At that point, it's a civil case and they have to file the paperwork to have this um, put into lawsuit form, which will, of course, take months. They'll then be on a waiting list, like, what, over a year in length in some of these major cities to even have somebody think about their case. And that affords a huge window of time for these people they don't even freaking know to be living in the house they thought they were going to be selling for a huge price. And the problem with this is that um, once that uh, bogus paperwork is produced, um, they're um, seen by the state as landlords and these criminals, they don't even freaking know who broke into their place and are not paying any rent are then seen as tenants. So um, the legal repercussions of not treating them as tenants or violating your um, expectations as a landlord are very serious, such that um, there's one uh, landlord in um, New York who actually didn't mean to be a landlord. He's an involuntary landlord um, with uh, squatters living in his place that he has to 
pay every month um, for their utilities to be on because as a landlord, according to New York law, if he um, turns off the um, uh, natural gas for heating their shower, if he turns off the water, if he turns off the electricity, etc., cetera, um, he'll be fined $250 a day. Now, think about that for a moment. If it takes a whole year for somebody in the court to even think about their case on a Cartesian level, um, if he pays $250 a day for an entire year or longer, uh, this is going to be a very serious problem. So it's the lesser of two evils he's coerced into uh, providing free utilities to, once again, a bunch of freaking criminals he doesn't even know who he didn't intend to be the landlord of, who are not paying any rent to him. And this is something which is actually not against the rules of the society you guys live in. It's an abuse of the rules themselves, even to the point that um, the uh, squatters are able to claim, <laughs> what is it, adversive ownership of the property if they stay there for enough years. In some states, um, that number of years can be as low as just three. In the state of Arizona, if you squat any place for three years, you can claim to be the owner on grounds that you pay, if you paid the property taxes, um, if you bribed the government into this anyway. Um, the house that uh, that guy thought he was going to sell for $900,000, you can steal it just through paying the property taxes for a few years. And this is, once again, not against the rules. This is in, a, in accord with rules from the 18th century, like the Homesteading Act, um, which basically stipulated that um, if somebody um, settled land without paying for it, like out on the frontiers of America in the 18th century, when there was still a lot of open land that nobody had claimed, um, if they just developed the land for, you know, a couple of years um, and improve it, turn it into a farmstead, they can then claim adverse of ownership and file a petition to become the legal owners of the place. And you could still do that now, even if you're not doing a damn thing to develop some suburban house um, into an actual farmstead. You could still cite the law and become the owner of it, stealing it from the person who thought they were going to make a million bucks off of it. So to bring this back to the very controversial point I made at the beginning of this video, that this somehow has something to do with democracy and rationalization of society. You will probably be skeptical the first time you hear that, but I'm going to make the case that that actually is the explanation for how we got into this situation. So um, the funny thing about democracy, you know, the only thing you're supposed to think about this year as um, you will actually find that your votes will be held for five days for them to give, um, as I predict, every state except Wyoming and South Dakota to um, the incumbent who actually isn't doing anything to campaign. Um, well, the, they're told that you're not supposed to think about inflation. You're not supposed to think about World War III breaking out. Did you see the news about Iran a few days ago um, sending missiles into a country, which we all thought it would be impossible that they would ever attack? Well, um, World War III is breaking out now, and um, the uh, American people are formally bankrupt and um, the global economy is crashing as we speak but we're told no 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 you're a bad person if you think about any of those things that actually affect your life the only thing you're allowed to think about this election is democracy itself but what on earth does that mean well I've mentioned in several videos already that there's a certain ambiguity with regard to the word democracy we tend to think of it as simply the expression of the will of the people but it's not really that as Slavoj Žižek mentioned in his 2008 book, In Defense of Lost Causes, democracy is really the name for an impersonal communicative procedure which has to be respected even if its results blatantly violate common sense. In 2000, his own example from that time, um, a few hundred votes in like one obscure county in Florida decided the election for 300 million people. Um, in blatant violation of the common sense idea that, no, no, it should be the hundreds of millions who decide the election. No, it's only the couple hundred who happen to be in a contested um, county in an important state that would tip the election in the favor of either Gore or Bush because it was neck and neck that election. Only one state decided it, and within that, only a couple counties or one county. It's been 24 years, of course, so it's hard to remember exactly how many, but it was a couple hundred votes, okay? And um, uh, Zizek said, no, no, that's not an aberration from democracy as an impersonal procedure of communication whose results must be respected even if they violate common sense. That's exactly the embodiment of the notion of that, and this is exactly what you have to do if you democratize in the precise Habermasian sense of rationalizing society um, as um, a linguistification that dissolves metaphysical biases from the previous 
era. So that might sound like a mouthful, but basically the idea here is you can only be a rationalized modern society if you do away with any obscure metaphysical fetishisms like absolute values of right, wrong, etc. No, no, no. We don't expect beforehand that one thing is morally absolute um, to be true or false, morally absolute to be right or wrong, etc. We dissolve those fetishisms and we just set up a process of communication, like say voting, holding an election, etc., and allow that to decide. Well, this is basically what you get if you take that too far. Um, you have the rationalization of society to the point that it violates basic common sense um, by having the law abused in its linguistified form by criminals who then coerce landlords into providing them free utilities for a few years, free rent, and then steal their house after a few years. And if the police are called um, in that situation where you're trying to get them out, they'll actually arrest the landlord. You may have seen this uh, viral video. Uh, there was a uh, landlord, um, <laughs> an unintentional landlord in Queens, New York, who was trying to uh, get two squatters out of her property, and she was arrested for wrongful eviction. Because as an unintentional landlord, she couldn't evict them without going through the due process. So because she violated the rule of the law, in that sense, she she was the one who was put in handcuffs and taken away. Sounds like an absolutely absurd and irrational situation, but the irony here is it's actually not. It's This is just what happens if you take rationality in the sense of the linguistification of the law, the kind of things that robots would be expected to do, um, and push it so far that it violates common sense. That's exactly what the rationalization of society really is. And you could see more of this nonsense as we go forward, because it's gotten to the point now where this was always possible, but the technology has made it easier than ever before to take this to the mainstream, because um, the uh, number of Venezuelan rapists who um, are willing to flip through that many legal books um, from the 18th century, uh, these old outdated laws and legal texts to find out how to do this is virtually none, but the number who can listen to some dumbass on TikTok in a short video telling them how to do it in plain terms in Spanish um, from a viral video shared hundreds of thousands of times is a lot larger.